Hello everyone. Welcome to the next section of the course, Application Layer Protocols. Now we move on to the first video of this section, that is, Remote Procedure Call, RPC. With the rise of networked and distributed systems, it became necessary to let a common set of operations be accessible over a network, so that validated clients can call them. This is often called a Remote Procedure Call, RPC. Real-world RPC has a number of application layer protocols defined, which are far more complex. One of the most popular RPC implementations is gRPC, which was initially introduced by Google and later moved to an open source model. gRPC offers high performance RPC over internet scale networks and is widely used in a number of projects, including Kubernetes. Before digging deeper into gRPC, let's look at protocol buffers, a related tool. It's a set of mechanisms to build language and platform neutral exchanging structured data between applications. It defines its own interface definition language, IDL, to describe the data format, and a compiler that can take that format and generate code to convert it to and from it. For our gRPC example, we'll build a service that's a lot like Uber. It has a central server where clients, cabs, can record their names and locations. And then, when a user requests a cab with their location, the server sends back a list of cabs near that user. Ideally, this server should have two classes of clients, one for cabs and one for users, but for simplicity's sake, we'll assume that we have only one type of client. Let's start with setting up the project. Like always, we'll use cargo CLI to initialize the project and enter the command cargo new bin grpc example. First, we'll enter into the grpc example project. Provide the password. And then we'll open the cargo.toml file in nano. All of our dependencies are listed in the dependencies section of cargo.toml. As you can see, we've included this block of code under the dependencies section. In this example, we'll use the build script feature to generate Rust source code from our protocol definition using protoc rust grpc 0.2.1 crate. Hence, we'll need to add that as a build dependency. Lastly, we'll save this file. Let's look at the build script. Let's navigate to gRPC's build RS file. For that, first we'll come out of the gRPC example. Then we'll run the ls command for listing all directories. Now we'll open build.rs file in nano editor. In this block of code, we'll use the protoc underscore rust underscore gRPC crate to generate rust modules from our proto file, also called foobar.proto. We also set the Rust proto buff flag to make it generate proto buff messages. Note that the protoc binary must be available in dollar path for this to work. This is part of the proto buff package. Next, we'll perform a few steps to install it from the source. Firstly, download the pre built binaries from GitHub. We'll execute this command. Then we'll run this command to unzip the archive. The next step is to copy the binary to somewhere in dollar path. Hence, we'll specify the path in the command and provide valid password. This current example has been tested on Ubuntu 16.04 with protoc version 3.5.1. Next, we'll need the protocol definition. So for that, we'll navigate to grpc and also into the root file. Once we've moved into the root file, we'll open foobar.proto file in nano. The proto file starts with a declaration of the version of proto buff IDP spec. We'll be using version 3. The package declaration indicates that all the generated code will be placed in a Rust module called foobar, and all other generated code will be placed in a module called foobar underscore grpc. Now let's define a service called foobar service that has two RPC functions. That is record cab location, that records the location of the cab, given its name and location, and another function is getCabs that will return a set of cabs given a location. We'll also need to define all associated proto buff messages for each of the requests and responses. The spec also defines a number of built in data types that closely correspond to those in a programming language string, float, and so on. Having set up everything related to the proto buff message formats and functions, we can use Cargo to generate actual Rust code. The generated code is located in the source directory and will be called foobar.rs and foobar underscore grpc.rs. These names are automatically assigned by the compiler. The lib.rs file should re-export those using the pub mod syntax. 
Note that Cargo Build will not modify the lib.rs file for us. That needs to be done by hand. Let's move on to our server and client. Here's what the server will look like. Note that this server is very different from the servers we wrote in previous sections. This is because gRPC Server Builder encapsulates a lot of the complexity in writing servers. Foobar Service is the service protobuf compiler generated for us, defined as a trait in the file foobar grpc.rs. As expected, this trait has two methods, record cab location and get cabs. Thus for our server, we'll need to implement these traits on a struct and pass that struct to Server Builder to run on a given port. In our toy example, we'll not actually record cab locations. A real-world app would want to put these in a database to be looked up later. Instead, we'll just print a message saying that we received a new location. We also need to work with some boilerplate code here to make sure all gRPC semantics are fulfilled. In the getCabs function, we always return a static list of cabs for all requests. Note that since all protobuf messages are generated for us, we get a bunch of utility functions, like getName and getLocation for free. Finally, in the main function, we'll pass our server struct to grpc to create a new server on a given port and run it on an infinite loop. Next, we'll run a command to open the client file. Our client is actually defined as a struct in the source generated by the protobuf compiler. We just need to make sure the client has the same port number we're running our server on. Here, we'll use the new plain method on the client struct and pass an address and port to it along with some default options. We can then call the record cab location and get cab methods over RPC and process the responses. This is how a run of the client will look like. As noted before, this is not as dynamic as it should be, since it returns only hard-coded values. Hence, we'll execute server in this terminal and client in another terminal. We need to wait patiently, as it will take time to download and get compiled. You can toggle between the terminals and check the progress. Notice how it exits right after talking to the server. The server, on the other hand, runs in an infinite loop and does not exit till it gets a signal. Once the compilation is completed, we'll get the output on the client terminal, which will display the names and locations of the cab. That's all about the RPC React to Server and Client.